Hello and welcome back to whatever this is. Not the Ben Heck Show. No longer. Copyright. Element uh, 14. <laughs> an Fnet company. <laughs> no, so okay, so the we are all members of the 1989 Batman Invest Club. <laughs> right? It's true. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. finally was remastered on 4K Blu-ray HDR. You'll be impressed. HDR is pretty impressive. That's I'm why excited. I watched it downstairs. I haven't seen an HDR movie yet. So before we do that, we thought we would basically do like a follow-up to the Ben Heck show and then also tell some behind the scenes stories that they probably wouldn't let us tell in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Although you still work for them, so you know, you're gonna be trouble. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, well, so. it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. So Max, what are you doing now? So I'm still working for Element 14. And they were obviously still looking for content after the Ben Hack show ended. So what we ended up doing was having a contest called Hack Like Heck mm -hmm. to basically replace Ben with a bunch of different uh, ele electronics enthusiasts so that instead of over overwhelming one person, we're making a show that's very similar to the Ben well, Hack show. Well, two people, Felix. That's true. Very similar to the Ben Heck show, but with a lot of people, so it's a little more sustainable. And you can, and uh, each person is able to spend more time on each build, which is nice. So yeah, so you have like ten people working on things for like a month or two at a time. So there's always at least one thing being done every week. Yeah, instead finished. of instead of every week, uh, like it was on the Ben Heck show, you having to just come up with whatever it was and and execute it. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And then you left in 2015. You pieced out. I did. You're like, Max, take this. I don't yeah, want to be I ghosted. Well, when I'm not watching Netflix on my phone, <laughs> because, you know, I've moved on from watching them on my iPad, apparently. Yes. So you've got so you've small. Downgraded. I have, yeah. I have. Mm. But minimalism is, you know, important did to me. Did something happen to yeah. the iPad, or did you? Was that a conscious choice? Well, your iPad's pretty obsolete by now, I assume. Yeah, it was mm. like the, the, what do they call it, the new iPad, but it was really the it iPad It was the 3. Retina. Oh yeah, I remember I, I always wanted to like steal it from you. Yeah. Apparently. Because I only had the iPad 2. Yeah, so you used to like murder me just so you could have my iPad. Which <laughs> that was my plan. It's like a lot of work, but... See, I would get away with it in court because no one would believe that. So, I, like... do, so I did write in my will, like no matter what, Ben could not have my iPad. <laughs> In there. Uh, it's like, well, I killed her for it. So if I die in mysterious circumstances, <laughs> I cannot have the if, iPad. If you find me dead and the only thing stolen is an iPad 3 from 2012, <laughs> it was bad. So, and you'll be all the way across the country. Oh, yeah, so what do you Wait, wait, wait. That has to happen one more tangent related to this before I talk about what I'm doing now. Uh, which is, some of you may remember Rusty, who worked on the show. For a little while. Yes, because we only hire different. people who's named after dogs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and he... He was in the intro for a while. In his exit interview, so to speak, we're just kind of like, you know, for the next assistant, what could we do differently? Mm -hmm. Or like... Who's Felix? Yeah. And he goes, no, it was great. Like, the only thing was that I found it really weird how often you and Ben talked about murdering each other. <laughs> and he was being completely <laughs> serious. Uh... <laughs> Oh yeah, because the big idea was like we were going to like use icicles, like yeah, so there also yeah, wouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. So I guess That's we talk CSI about episode. murdering each other a lot, which we don't well, notice, but other people do. We 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 worked on the on the show for so long, just the two of us. I think we were just kind of like. Ugh. Now I work for the University of Wisconsin Madison, um, in a group called Academic Technology. We support teaching and learning through the use of technology, and I specifically create media. Um, mostly for courses, so a lot of video work. I also have been doing more podcasting lately, which I think is super fun. <laughs> Love that. Uh, yeah, so... You find the podcasting a little bit more loose than the video? Or well, I mean, less restrictive? Yeah, because, I mean, it's just like you can you can edit it however you want. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. no cuts to cover. It's just like a beautiful thing. Yeah. And also just like that it's often in different format as well. Like the product that you can deliver is going to be different than what you can do. Um, you can get a lot more bang for your buck, so to speak. Like you can produce a lot more audio for a certain amount of money than you can produce a video. Makes sense. 
Uh, yeah. Didn't so you have to I just kind of like, and also I just like the design aspect, thinking about a product that's like just audio. And you've gotten a lot more into After Effects uh, mm. since then as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So definitely doing things that are just like completely graphic based as well. Do you like animate like molecules and stuff? I have animated some molecules, created some particle fields. You oh, know, cool. Yeah. Cool. Fancy. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. You like the power of the sun in the palm of my hand. <laughs> cool. So yeah, yeah, I enjoy it. So nice. It's good stuff. What I've learned though in the time that I've been working there is that my least favorite thing about being a video producer is actually filming. Like, <laughs> I try to always get someone else to do that for me, like, when I'm doing a project. Mm -hmm. um, because, like, that's just my, le it's for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because I just had to film so darn much when I worked on yeah. the Ben Hedge yeah, show. Yeah, could be. Yeah. I'm just, like... Well, one thing I've noticed in the past is, like, yeah, filming it, is, it almost kind of seems like the boring part. Yeah. And then, but when you're actually just sitting there and you have all the pieces and you're assembling them, that's when you actually feel like you're in control. Yeah. And you're like, okay, now I can, like, shape this. Now that I've, you know, yeah, yeah. and like the pre-production right. aspect too. Like I'm happy to sit down and like come up with a shot list based on the script and like mm -hmm. figure out where it's going to be shot, how it's going to be shot. But when it comes down to like actually like running the camera, mm -hmm. it's just I don't know. Yeah, so, maybe we did burn you out because like what four years, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. There's also the most physical movement involved with shooting. So that's of, another <laughs> aspect. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you pretty much just edit now, right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then for me, well, I mean, I did, I did start making a few new YouTube videos, but only when I feel like it. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, so, I've, well, that's not really what I do most of the time. I've been doing a lot, a lot more accessibility controller work, and then I also redesigned a new um, latency tester for video game companies. Oh, okay. And uh, I've been doing those for like 10 years. Yeah. But then last year, one of the first things I did after I stopped doing the show was, I, okay, I'm going to redesign this with a bunch of new features. And I consulted with that uh, guy from Raven Burned. And uh, yeah, and serendipitously, everyone's doing like cloud gaming now. Like Google's mm -hmm. got cloud gaming, mm -hmm. Xbox is doing it. So it's a good time to create a new way to test latency. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, oh, and I'm also designing a new pinball machine controller, smaller and cheaper. Oh, did I ever tell you my uh, new Glarus commercial that I came up with? No. Tell us. So, my idea for a new Glarus commercial is it's uh, Moses coming down from the mountain and he has the, t the tablets and then right. he sees all the Israelites worshipping the cow and drinking spotted cow. And he's like, how could this be? <laughs> and, then, and then it cuts to a black screen that says, new Glarus, worship the cow. What if he's about to smash the tablets and he's really upset but then someone hands him a spot of the cow for him to drink, mm. and he's like, mmm. And then he's like, screw party. this god guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a party at the end. <laughs> yeah. And the party never ended. Oh yeah, yeah. that it could be. Just good. went on forever. It's yeah. A, it's like you could you could create a bunch of other videos about Moses partying with yeah. spotted cow. Yeah. Could be good. I, I, and they never make it to the promised land because they're all drunk. Mm -hmm. Like how do we don't need to go where we're canon? We've got this beer. Well, it's not here. Oh yeah, so that were Ben. What? That is a good segue into That's our next great topic. Throw up segue. As a matter, as a matter of fact, about travels. Oh and there yes. There was this one time that we were hanging out in. I don't know if it was San Mateo proper. Where were we exactly? You talking about when we were talking about holding hair? Yeah. So that we, was San Jose. Actually. Oh, that okay. Yeah. So we were in San Jose. For some nerdy conference, I didn't bother to remember what it was. <laughs> do, we, do you even care about nerdy electronic culture? No. It was like the embedded software conference. It looks good, it sounds good. Like yes, that. it was. Okay, yep. so I did remember. I paid attention a little. And so we went to this Italian restaurant. We had some drinks. Yeah, we went and we sat at the bar, remember, at that Italian restaurant? Anyway, I vaguely remember the Italian restaurant. Like, yeah. wasn't like. We couldn't figure out where to eat or something? Yeah, we couldn't figure out. And anyway, so we went there, had some drinks, and then we were going to go and, like, 
have more drinks or whatever and we're standing at the a lot of drinking happened in the back yeah and we're standing at, at, at a stoplight waiting to cross the street yeah i remember that and ben says don't worry allison if you get so drunk i'll hold your hair and there is this woman, <laughs> <laughs> woman who was standing yep. up next to us and she just laughed and said what a good friend <laughs> <laughs> and then we got the walk signal no. and we went about oh. our our time that's amazing Jeez, the only reason i knew about i didn't spew in the end. I only knew about the whole <laughs> hold your hair thing because you told me about it. Yeah. And I think exactly. it was because we're talking about Tiffany, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my blah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Max, I know what your favorite trip was. Freescale. 2015. That was your I first trip. It was my it? first yeah. That was yeah, Austin, first time Austin. going to Austin, Texas. And, and what was so remarkable about the trip was the catering. Because what was so amazing about it, first of all, you couldn't walk like 10 feet without finding beer. There are bars everywhere. We should say, that, so this was a Freescale Semiconductors uh, conference in Austin, Texas. Yes. Before they were bought by NXP. Yes. And so, also for every meal, there was a different ethnicity of food. Yep. So like For lunch and dinner. For lunch and dinner. So it's like Mexican, and then it'd be Chinese, and then it'd be something else. Yep. That was just ridiculously good. And you were dating a vegan at the time. Oh, yes. And I was dating a vegan at the time, <laughs> so I was like, Ben, we're going to eat barbecue every day. Yep. And we did. And we did. <laughs> and it was oh. wonderful. You know, it's, it's too bad. Remember how you got there a day after me? Yeah. And we had that uh, Alamo Draft House? Yeah, because you went to the best barbecue place, didn't you? Yes, that's what I was going to say. Like, you, of all the places we went to, unfortunately, I went to the best one before you got there. Right. Oh, and that's and why you I had your brownie. You went on your yes. brownie uh, search. You should brownie. tell the story of that. Yeah, so there's this... Uh, I think it was like... Cool brownie. 2013, I was in Austin, Texas for... I don't remember why I was there. And we went to this restaurant. It was on the north side of Austin. Mm -hmm. And this place had this amazing... Oh, I was with uh, Aaron, Aaron Matthews, yeah, yeah. the doctor. Yeah. Who was in an episode many, many years ago. And it was this amazing brownie. It wasn't like, it wasn't like Gordon Ramsay He good. talked about this brownie like For forever. years. Forever. And so the next time I was in Austin, I'm like, I have to find that restaurant. Seek out the brownie. <laughs> and I had I had all my I had all the pins on the map and Google. I'm like, I think I'm pretty sure it's one of these three places, right? Because it was near Pinball's Arcade. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, we we you know, we went to we found the place and I was able to find it. And you know, it didn't really quite live up to my memory. <laughs> but I found That's it. That's too bad. Yeah. But then after after I got there, like two days later, um, for some reason, it was just the next day. Was it the next? Yeah. Day? <laughs> so for some reason, I my flight was really early, so I had stayed up all night and was just exhausted by the time I got to Austin. And but then we ate ribs for lunch. But then we we ate ribs for lunch, and then at night we decided to go to Jurassic World. So you which, could experience Alamo Draft House. So I could experience Alamo Draft House. Yes. And as people probably know, Alamo Draft House is technically a bar. Yep. So you can't, you're not allowed to fall asleep at a bar in the way that you would be, you would be able to at a movie theater. But people fall asleep in movies all the time. Yeah, I know. And really, I blame Jurassic World because I just, I hated that movie. It was, was like, not a good film. I got halfway through and I'm like, oh, I can just tune out, I need to listen to this. So I started falling asleep and the guy comes over to me and he's like, oh, sir, you can't. You can't fall asleep here. And it happened multiple times where he just kept coming over. I was like, I've been up for I mean, 24 maybe hours. Old You're people, torturing me. I mean, like, old people probably don't go to Alamo Draft House. Yeah. Because people True. fall asleep during movies all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So the la the third act of the movie, we kept having to elbow you mm -hmm. to keep you awake. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just falling asleep. So I think that's why we were like, this... That, that movie has, like, a special place in our hearts of hatred. It's particularly bad, too. But then the second one, remember we watched that for a bad movie night, the second one is so bad it, it becomes good. It kind of goes around yes, the horn. Yes, yeah. makes it all the way around. Yeah, it's a, it's a volcano island, which is already great. And then it turns into like a dinosaur haunted house movie. It was just insane how much, like at 6 o'clock, every night of the Freescale Conference, like these bars, it's, it's like a convention center, so there's all these booths, all mm -hmm. these vendors. But then these bars just appeared out of nowhere. Remember that? Yeah. Every, like every they four moves, it was insane. And then like there was like mega bars like in the corners. You remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. They stuck four of them together like quad desk. <laughs> it was nuts. <laughs> the thing I most remember, like the one booth I most remember there, was this special microwave that these yes! people had made. Yes. And so it was this microwave where you could put anything in it and it would cook it correctly. Like, so the two examples they had were 
they would throw a piece of steak in there yep. and it would just cook it perfectly medium rare and delicious because it could it could put the beams wherever it needed to and mm -hmm. it could also analyze the way the beams were being absorbed by the food yeah and then adjust them accordingly which was really interesting and then they had jalapeno balls yeah that was the other example yeah where the the jalapeno poppers where the outside of them was like perfectly crispy it tasted is, kind of like a fried food yeah well which wasn't is greasy, but which is really rare for wow. the microwave. Yeah, usually they just come out soggy and terrible. I, I went to that booth many times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a very easy booth to come back to because I was like, yeah, oh, that microwave. I so you, you quit just in time to uh, miss the best food-related trip we ever had, and and Steve Wozniak was there. We got to hear him speak, which is really cool. Yeah. And and got to see cake. <laughs> Although yeah. we, after all the good food, we were hoping they were going to give us cake. Yeah. But it was the group yeah. cake. Cause, cause at, the time, at the time, I didn't know what who cake was in terms of the band. Yeah. So when they announced cake was going to be there, I'm like, oh, cool, we get cake. The cake there. was alive. <laughs> the cake was alive. So we were went to London. London. And then you we, went to London. Yeah. Yes, I went to London. And then I met to you and M Milton Keynes after, after, I spent, after I spent hours walking around London like this saying, I am a Kingsbury. Because <laughs> that's your maiden name. Yes. And I, I would always make fun of you. I would do like a, a Monty Python voice and be like, what's your name then? The king's dead. Go to bury the king. Might be a good bury the king. You're Kingsbury, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> and I would always say, that's and you're like, not what it means. It's like, oh, it's a place, <laughs> not a perfect... Think about all the, like, Carpenter, Miller, Yeah, but those Cooper. are German names. I know, but there's a lot of last names that are professions. That's true. true. That's Baker. That's true. true. There's still Smith. a Kingsbury Castle, so I'm just going to throw that out there. Is it yours? <laughs> You'd be like, I'm a secret princess, let me in! <laughs> I've got Cockney accents! Nicholas Cage probably snapped it up already. So yeah, but you, anyways, you anyways. got to go, so you landed in London a day <laughs> early, so you got to actually hang out in London for a day. I did. Whereas I, I the star of the show, <laughs> landed in London and had to immediately get on a train and go to uh, Leeds. Yeah. Oh, you had to tour the facility, right? Yes, so I, oh god, that was, that was the worst jet lag I ever well, had. Well, I was supposed yeah. to be in London for two days, but my flight from Madison to Chicago was canceled. Mm. Sucked. Two days? Yeah. <sighs> Anywho, um, we were eating some fish and chips at our, at no, we walked from our, our, Bed and breakfast, and which Milton was like a Keen, horse ranch, right? Place. Yeah, it was like a horse ranch. Oh, we should say we were going to the electromagnetic field event. Yeah, which was super fun. Which was basically a bunch of geeks camping in a cornfield. Yeah, and it was near uh, Bletchley Park, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. where uh, mm -hmm. Alan Turing built the Colossus computer yes. that cracked the Enigma code. That's right. There's a movie about it if you want to learn more. Anyway, starring Doctor Strange. So we walk game. into town to go to this nice place. And eat some fish and chips, which I'm sorry, fish anyone who's chips. listening from England, but it was not as good. Like, I'd take a whisk on some fish fry mm. over English fish and but chips we're good at fish any fry. day. The uh, best fish and chips I ever had was when I was in New Zealand, actually. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, well, we anyways, it. but it was still good. Yeah, yeah, it was still pretty good. We had some beer, of course. Yeah, I remember that place. And then we had more beer. We didn't course. have that much. I mean, why not? <laughs> And then we were trekking home. Because we walked there. Yeah, and all of a sudden, like, we realized that there were slugs everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, huge slugs, like the size of my yeah. thumb. They're, no, they're, slugs. and they're, but they're, I think they're big. They're like, yeah, I mean, was like, it as raining? thick as my thumb, but. No, it was long. moist. No, it was moist, but it wasn't really raining. Please don't huh. say moist. <laughs> oh, I forgot you hit that word. <laughs> so, yeah, there were these slugs everywhere. And they're everywhere. Yeah. And so we were like, if we're not careful, we're going to squish them. So right? we were just like, doo, 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 Well, I had my, I had my uh, phone flashlight, <laughs> yeah. you remember? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll let you tell this next part. Because right. we didn't know it at the time, but Ben could have gotten, I guess, his brain-eating disease. Maybe I did get it. It's could possible. Be. Yeah, that apparently the, the slugs can give you a disease which eats your brain. Jesus. But I didn't know this at the time. Why, why, did, why did we even find this out? Did you look it up afterwards? No, remember, was his name Chris? That amazing English guy who was like mm. our guide and yes. caretaker. And the, he, he basically was like a real life version of Sam. The Sam from Game of Thrones. Yes. yes. Mm. Yeah. Who somehow lived through that battle at the end. Yeah. He was awesome. 
Okay. Thank you for everything, Chris, if you're out there listening. So anyway, we were we were walking very carefully, not squish the slogs on the way back to the bed and breakfast. And for some <laughs> reason I decided to pick one up. Yes. Yeah. And so and didn't didn't we come up with like a, a like a behind the scenes like the slugs point of view of yeah, it? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so so what we thought the slugs point of view, like it was a <laughs> Pixar movie. They're like crawling along and all of a sudden like the dad gets picked up and he's like ah! and then the kids and the wife are like ah! they gasp. Yeah. And then he's like, ah, no, take care of your mother and sister. Goodbye. But the only reason I picked it up was because I wanted to see what would happen if I tickle it. <laughs> That's you right. Remember? I forgot you wanted to tickle yeah. it. Why was your first thought to tickle it? I just wanted to see how it would react to me tickle. And it, and it did react. It was like, woo. <laughs> And so then, remember, we came up with that, that song, I tickle the slug yeah. and I like it. Uh, and then oh, but then, eating disease. But then after, you know, the dramatic Disney scene. Yeah. And then he just, it's like, gotcha, 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 gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that happens. Uh, yeah. So then I put it, then I put it back down on the ground. The slug. Oh, all right. So, One more trip story. So. One more trip story. So was that the same trip? Yeah. Well, let's just say it was. 2012? I'm pretty sure it was. I think it was my first, like, our first trip together for the yes. Ben show. So we went to San Francisco, and at the time, the show was being distributed by Element... No, excuse me. Revision 3. <laughs> Revision 3. Of course, Ooh. the only reason we went there was so we could go to their happy hour. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. And, like, you had to make a guest appearance in some other show. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But, yeah. And then we're, like, walking by their edit bays... And what that the guy who put the music in there, which as editors we know, easy. So easy. Okay, mm. right? Well, they had that. They <laughs> Dropping had that, some lower thirds, boom. They had easy. that editor, remember, and she yeah. was from Madison, right? So, yeah. like, oh, we have a connection. Or, mm. Anyway, so the real magic in editing is finding that story, knowing what you can actually remove and have it still make sense. Right? And they would remove Am a lot I of it. Right? Am I right? Right, but they, they weren't there, boots on the ground, so they would remove things that didn't make sense. Oh, yeah, every now... Okay, anyway, so we're there, and like the guy who did the editing walked out of his edit bay, and they're like, yeah, that's where all the editing happens, and I was just like... And I, I, I said to you later, I could picture cartoon steam coming out yeah, of your ears, yes, you know, like yeah, Roger Rabbit so or something. And it, but and part of the thing is that there was just like a big communication disconnect that Element 14 really didn't but do you know remember, remember what our, Revision 3 was supposed to be doing for them, and they didn't mm. realize how much they weren't doing. But remember our, I mean? our, our, we had that black car that we took up, and that driver was really hilarious. Remember him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had a really nice talk with him. Yeah. That was when we were going from... Uh, Oh God. We were yeah, we were in San Mateo and then we had to go basically well not downtown San Francisco, but like northeast side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just remember that driver was very engaging. Yeah, 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 yeah that was fun. And that was the same trip where we went to Google. Yes. So that was the negative portion of the trip. So well, Allison got I real mean mad the portion. I mean the the real the, 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 uh, the happy hour yeah, was fine. That was so yeah, we went to Google because That was when we first got there. Yeah, hey Hayes. Thomas Hayes. Thomas yep. Hayes invited us and it was so fun i rode a google bike we just like biked around oh we got the google cave this is how i ride a bike <laughs> so yeah so basically oh, yeah. and then we ate all of their snacks any <laughs> snacks that we could find we ate them the google campus which of course is huge um there's bikes everywhere mm -hmm. but it's kind of like those scooters they have now in cities where you just hop on a bike and you take it to whatever other, other building you want mm -hmm. so of course you were just thrilled with that yeah yeah i'd like to bike but you guys know that. Over. But it was like an episode of home. it was like an episode <laughs> of Mad Men because there's booze everywhere. At yeah, Google. and snacks. It's just like it just comes out of the walls. We really. had a nerf fight, which I totally won. Oh yeah, that was a place with that had the uh, had the fire pole, right? Mm -hmm. Like Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. We went to the. Did, were you? Was it? Did we go to their 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 shop? Remember where all the machinery? We did. Okay, we did. that's where the cake was. We got pre <laughs> some birds. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, the end of the story yeah, was alcohol. Yeah, we heard about so. the, like Googlers or Nooglers or... Yeah, they, they had to wear like Googlers. beanie hats or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or, 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 oh, like we, a hazing thing. Do you remember the Google food so, court? Yeah. Do you remember that? You were there that day, oh right? Oh my gosh, I walked in and was like... Ah. It's like, imagine like a really, <laughs> I really... I love cafeterias. It's like a super high-end food court. <laughs> it's a specific interest. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, ma- imagine like <laughs> imagine like a really good food court in a mall, but it's like in yeah. Google, and, and there's like a little bit of everything. just everything's around. free, just yeah. whatever you want. And it's just like this That's wonderful incredible. buffet of like wonderful things. A and bounty. Yeah, smorgasbord. Yeah, I mean, we did a lot of trips, but yeah, we did. Probably the worst one was when we did that episode of Maker Fair where we tried to build something at the fair. That was a that was my fault. Terrible idea. <laughs> Live or Detroit, and learn. Live or Detroit, and learn. where you had to switch rooms. Oh yeah, we should, that's the last last uh, travel story, story we were talking about. Was it 2015? I think so. Yeah, we were filming a, an episode in Detroit, and that was the best acting that I ever did. <laughs> yeah, because we got to Detroit and we stayed in this hotel, and your air conditioning was broken. Well, that I mean, that wasn't the. I mean, I was sick. The air conditioning was, was just a cherry on top it of a shit Sunday. It, though. Yeah. Because the next, the next day, we, we had to do the shoot, and Ben comes in, and he's just gla- sunglasses inside and just complete hangover man. And I wasn't hungover. I was sick. But it looked, it looked <laughs> like you were hungover. But you I were. wish I would have been hungover, because I can deal with that. <laughs> I, but, so I was worried I was going to get all the people I was interviewing with sick. I was, yeah. Well, they say, when you're sick, you're not contagious anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. So you're feeling terrible. We had to do these interviews. And between every take, I would lay on the floor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. Wow. I was just like, oh my god, this is horrible. But, but, while we were shooting, Ben went into full host mode and you couldn't tell at all. It was just like, wow, this is just how he acts normally. That so, was the best acting I was I've impressed. ever done. I was very impressed. Wow. I also remember I walked around with Felix during the convention and he interviewed a couple people and I just remember him looking at this giant rocket in the center of the space and he was like that's a big rocket (laughs) 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 just looked at the camera and i remember editing in that part oh there were a few sections of that where i didn't edit it in because it was too funny to me because because it was like felix being felix and we were wandering around and there was this i don't think i've told you this but it was this you know a moldorama machine oh of course so they had a Moldorama machine with, it was a Rosa Parks bus was the Moldorama thing. There's three of them there, actually. Yeah. And Felix goes up to it, gets the, he's, so the beginning of the segment was him saying, oh, look, a Moldorama. And then I show him, like, getting the, the Rosa Parks bus out yeah. of the thing. And then he holds it up to the camera and goes, a Rosa Parks bus from a Moldorama. I'm going to give this to my daughter. Come on, let's do something else. <laughs> For, I for so imagine. long, yeah, I so long, yeah. imagine. for so long, it was in the cut, and then like right before the final, I'm like, it's too irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> cut it out. There's actually a, an online map where you can see all the remaining Moldorama machines in the really? world. Yeah, that's cool. So the, the uh, Henry Ford Museum, which is where that took place, has three of them, which is a pretty mm-hmm. high concentration. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I think one of the funniest things on the show, at least for me was the remote control dog door episode. You remember? Oh, how could you forget? <laughs> <laughs> it was your most traumatic day. I think like people do need a little background. Like, yes. For instance, Ben refers... <laughs> I'm sorry, it just made me think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that then. Yes, Hold that we thought. will. Ben refers to my mom as MM, which is uh, an acronym that means mean mom. <laughs> yes. I first met your mom when I went to your wedding. And then, because the first thing I thought about her was she looked like my aunt, strangely hmm. enough. The one who's married to a DNR agent, uh, Dennis. Yes. Anyway, she, well, she, well, she's kind of like younger, like one of my younger uncles. And she was younger too. And so I started talking to her, and then she was perfectly nice to me, but for whatever reason, I'm like, she seems like she might be kind of mean. And then I, <laughs> we talked about that later yeah. on. Yeah, and I said, well, sure, yeah. And I was like, you know, Allison, I was standing <laughs> at Olbert Gardens near a door, and this woman came up in her, like, 50s, I suppose it would have been at the time, and that's how I met your mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Cute, so anywho, cute card. now that we've uh, set this up for you in such a fun way. Such a grandiose way. Um, so my mom has a dog and we often needed a dog for the show. Because like, like people 
you know, they love dogs. So people would be like, hey, build this dog thing, make this other dog thing. And one of them was an automatic door, dog door. That would lock. Oh, I said, what was the point of it? So really skinny people couldn't rob your house? Mm, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, so some sort of What's automatic it? dog door. It's locked Celine Dion the dog is trying to rob my house. <laughs> what? It's locked and the dog smacks its head on the thing. Well, that was part of the problem. Mm. So, so it was supposed to have an RFID like collar that when the dog was near it, it would open. We actually bought we bought a shock collar, and we changed it so it wouldn't shock the dog. It would instead of. It was like, like let's say you have a shock collar that's like a perimeter near your yard, mm -hmm. and it's basically a proximity sensor. So that was on the dog, but instead of that actually shocking the dog, it would actually press a button and send a signal back. Gotcha. So we we turned, we didn't shock the dog, we turned it into a proximity sensor, and that was basically like, oh, the dog is near the door, unlock the door. Right. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, so we needed to be able to do the reveal. You know, because yeah. the reveal is all about that important. reveal. Right. And the so, reveal needs to be half the episode, apparently. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> where I called my mom, you know, and I was like, hey, can you bring your dog on? Lola, so, right? Yeah, Lola, yeah. to be, you know, the, the other furry star of the Van Heck show. So she's like, sure. Furry star. <laughs> And but Lola wanted nothing to do with this, like because you can't just make a dog go. It's something a... you should know about the Ben Heck show. It was always on a really tight deadline, so it's like we already built we this current thing. Now we're just like trying to get this shot so that we can edit it and deliver it. But you can't get and a dog. Like, a dog is unfamiliar with that. Yeah. It would take weeks and weeks, yeah. not a day. And we need this dog to go through the freaking door. To never get, to never work with pets or children. Yeah, yeah they all exactly. <laughs> so it wasn't really working. I, you know what, Ben? I really think it would be best if he told the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we we built this door in a doorway, and I think like I was on one side, and your mom was on one side, and then Lola didn't want to go through the door because it scared her, right? Even though she had the collar and the door was triggering, and so we're like, well, we're just gonna have to like kind of fake it because like there were actually very 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 few times, like twice I think, where we actually like faked a result, and that was one of them, and uh, and so we just we I'm like we just need a shot of the dog going through the door, like we ex we show that everything works. The dog is the variable that doesn't work, and it's mm -hmm. not her fault. The dog doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and so your mom, who I always thought was kind of like the emperor on Star Wars, you know, like, do it. Right? <laughs> so she's like, just push the dog through the door. <laughs> and then Allison's there on the ground, like with her hands on the dog's butt, and she's like, no, I can't. It hurts my heart. <laughs> And you're legitimately distressed about the dog, and I just laughing my ass off because I just thought it was so funny because I have a twist and dark sense of humor. It was, just, it was the yeah. dog was shaking. How am I supposed to push that dog through the door? No. But, but yeah, your, your mom was just like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's still hilarious. It is. And there was always an ongoing oh. thing about how it's going to go to the dark side. And my mom was always like... Oh, and then she, yeah, she would be like, If you will not push the dog through the door, perhaps your sister will. <laughs> and then you'd be like, No! So there were a couple places where we would get suggestions for episodes. We'd get some suggestions from viewers, Some a lot would come from us, some would come from Element 14, and mainly they would come from you. But <laughs> I remember my first idea that got onto the show was a auto-sanitizing doorknob. Oh, yes. And <laughs> so... It was this thing where you would attach it to a doorknob and this sanitizing light would turn on and like rotate Sweet it around the thing. It was this terrible idea. And <laughs> we built it. And all, we built it. And all, you it's built it. It's not the dumbest thing that and was all, built on the bed heck show. All the, all the comments were like, do you know that copper is self-sanitizing or bronze or whatever it is? But hey, bronze has <laughs> copper in it. So so when we got when we got to the end of the episode, I remember we have this like contraption that's hanging off the door and this circuit board that's just dangling from wires. 
all to accomplish this thing that yeah. Franz could do yeah. passively. Yeah. And I remember I left it in the episode where you're just like looking at it and there's this pause and suddenly you're just like, why do we even build this? <laughs> yep. What was your funniest moment? Beside the part where you were crying about a dog. Okay. Well, that, was, that, was, that wasn't funny for it's you. funny for you. So... <laughs> okay. So you were talking about your mom riding a roller coaster. <laughs> I remember this. Because we were right in front of Arby's okay. in the car, remember? Okay. Yes. Actually, okay, that, actually, no. That's number two. I think this is number two funniest <laughs> thing. And, like, he was talking about his mom riding a roller coaster and all of this. Because whenever she, I do impressions of my mom, yeah. she sounds like a super, like, uh, what is it, Norwegian? Yeah, it's like, you know, that really, really... Uh, oh, over, yeah, you know, I went up to Six Flags yeah. up in Minneapolis, so, you know, and, and I did the maple like, syrup. And then she was like, you know, that was, a, uh, yeah, that was a really fun roller coaster, but uh, my, uh, I, I pooped. <laughs> yep. And I died. <laughs> Actually, the funniest, funniest, funniest one. And like, I, I literally fell on the floor laughing. Literally, like even on the shop floor that was covered in. Oh like yeah, you actually laid down on the floor and, like, and rolled around yes, laughing. Yes, I don't know what, but it was. I guess you just had to have been there. It was better than the poop. But yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were going through this phase where we were just making fun of Whitney Houston. I don't know why. Was that before she died? <laughs> I hope so. No, 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 not Whitney Houston. Oh. Tina, we were making fun of yes. Tina Turner. Yeah. We were just talking about okay, it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tina Anyways, Turner. Anyways, and then all of a sudden, like, okay, we're, but also we talk a lot about movies and bad movies. And because stuff. the Ben Hicks show was like 95%. Yeah, Tina percent, Turner. I don't know why I said Whitney Houston. It's like 95% working and standing around and 5% filming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then like we've been singing the song anyways and then all of a sudden. Tina Turner song. Yeah. And then all of a sudden Ben was like who needs a bird when a bird can be demic? And it just, I don't know, it just killed me. It was just like in the moment, the most hilarious thing I'd ever heard. So I, I fell onto the floor and rolled around laughing. And it's, it's a reference know, to the... You'd, you'd had to have been there for like the build up and like all of the other stuff that had going on surrounding our jokes. Because of the movie Bird Demic. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. but also all of our different variations of what's love got to do. There was a lot of laughs. Oh, we also, oh, remember how we, we talked about meatloaf a lot, the singer and yes. the food. Yeah, there was like a long obsession. And loafs. Yeah, with loafs, which is an <laughs> ongoing thing. Yeah, so it's basically like, who can think of the best way to change a song lyric where you insert loafs, as in poop, to make it funny? Yeah. And you had the best one. I did? Yes. What was it? Can you feel the loafs tonight? <laughs> that was another thing too, for some reason, it was like to um, incorrectly make plural mm -hmm. words yeah. that ended with and F. And like it now, my phone just gave up trying to autocorrect it. Like it knows that I just want to write loafs. Yeah. <laughs> and it wolves. Knows now. Yeah, it yeah. just knows like, yeah. Uh. Well, yeah, I was for some reason I was watching a bunch of uh, meatloaf music videos again between takes and then i was like i should come up with a meatloaf recipe yeah and that was probably about two that was in the old shop that was probably 2014. yeah and it was the best loaf i'd ever put in my mouth <laughs> you said that <laughs> it's oh, God. it was a it was a, it was i thought it was it was a yeah. high quality meatloaf no, it was. i put no. a lot of thought you, into that yeah you make yeah. a really good meatloaf thank you so now yeah. instead of people like giving me dirty dancing paraphernalia, they give me sloth paraphernalia. Well, if you hadn't, you know, made a song and choreographed a dance called the sloth. Oh, doing the sloth. Yeah, yeah. maybe. That's true. Yeah, I'm just saying. Well, you were into sloth slightly before Christian Bell. Yeah. Remember that? And then it you was found that like, I was pair. on the yeah. The sloth I hipster. was pretty team much. sloth. Yeah. yeah, before it was yeah. cool. First you jump and then you cough. Hey, everybody do the sloth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so your sloth story. So like, a couple of good sloth songs that we made were, um, it was Bad to the Bone, but it was ba 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 ba, -ba sloth <laughs> sloth to the bone. <laughs> <laughs> Just mind-numbingly stupid. <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, and there was uh, wow. also the same slotherettes as me. 
was another one. That's really reaching. Said, really wow. reaching. If yeah. I was there, yeah. I definitely would call too dumb on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. If somebody was too dumb, oh. Allison wouldn't laugh. She would, well, she laughs at pretty much everything. I do. I will laugh at almost everything. But then sometimes she'll be like, no. <laughs> no. That's too dumb. No. Yeah. But, yeah. There are many good ones. You know, I feel like I should make a quick confession, actually. Oh, yeah. And there's something that I never really owned up to that I feel like I should. And I've... Yeah. What did you do? You already know, but I was never really willing to take full responsibility for it. But I really did spoil X-Files for you by saying that... Spoiler alert! <laughs> that Dane... That she had... Cigarette Man. An alligator. Oh, I thought the no, alien you, baby. No, you spoiled Cigarette Man for me. I thought, oh. I go into work one day. This is like probably 2012. It's true. I really did this. And I was like, hey, Allison. I started watching X-Files this weekend because I'd never no, seen it before. No, okay. This part of it, though, is not totally true. You've been watching it for a little while. Not that long. <laughs> <laughs> I say, Maybe okay. I'm not ready to take responsibility. I take it. <laughs> okay, go on. That's your friend's version. That's fine. <laughs> I'm like, I started watching X-Files, or maybe I've been watching it for a few weeks, and you're like, spoiler warning, did you get to the part where the cigarette smoking man is Mulder's father? <laughs> and I'm like, what? I mean, and you know what that's revealed? Here's the part where her argument breaks down, season eight. You know what? Which I was nowhere near. It's been a while since I watched it, but you're right. I should have been more careful and I should have thought more about it before so the, I said it. So right after first, that, I was like, oh, the news are watching. The files is such a wonderful series. I just feel bad that I took that joy away from you and I just hope that one day you can forgive me. No. <laughs> when you started watching Battlestar Galactica and I'm like, I have to ruin this for Alice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to work one day. Here's a list of all the secret Cylons. <laughs> yeah, like, just so you know, Gaius, Balter, blah, blah, blah. Oh, do you get to the part yet when that guy starts the rebellion? <laughs> oh, and then at the end, it's actually Earth 100,000 years ago. <laughs> and also, they never had a plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. I forgot about your revenge on that one. But I thought, I think I, I, think I, uh, I was pretty easy on you. Yeah. Because Bowser Glad to get yeah, a good show. No, I just I do. You should watch Bowser Glad. I should. I gotta get into it. But now we just boiled the whole thing. True, yeah. the whole ah. thing. Ah. Oh uh, crap. Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh, it's right. a circle oh, of right. no. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't even know you, he doesn't, doesn't know what the characters' names yeah. are. Exactly. Yeah. He doesn't even know what his Cylon is. It's fine. Yeah. So my my favorite audience suggestion that was in the YouTube comments, I'm like looking through because I was just starting there and I used to read all the YouTube comments, <laughs> which is such a mistake, <laughs> such a mistake, because it's like, it's it just hurts your heart. Toxic community, but anyway, this one person is like, I have an idea for a build. What you should do is, you should make a bionic arm that can make toast in any location. And so, first of all, bionic arm, not doing that. That's that's like you know. Wasn't years this around the time of that would Metal Gear Solid that? Five would come out? We had a bionic <laughs> arm. There was such a thing about Metal Gear Solid yeah. Five. But toast in any location adds a whole new dynamic to it. You'd have to yeah. have some kind of material that was resistant to heat and well, magnetism. And then the energy that you're you should be using to power the robotic arm. Is now going to toast to production. Toast. Yeah, mm. yeah, and mm. and also, how are you going to find someone who's lost an arm and they're like, "Damn it, I can't make toast all the time." And also, a toast Anywhere enthusiast. I want. Anywhere yeah, I want. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, toast enthusiast. They're sitting there like at the edge of a mountain and a beautiful sunset. And they're looking down at their stump. <sighs> <laughs> no, yeah, they're, all they're they looking down. Some toast. Or they're looking down at their fully functional bionic arm and they're like, "Damn it, why can't I make toast?" <laughs> First world problem <laughs> right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, and we talked about that one forever because it was like so dumb. So dumb. Just the two things. Hey, I'm not a Vulcan anymore. I can say that. A comment was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how many uh, movie plots did we come up with? Like, that was a big thing you and I did that we didn't really talk about. Yeah. Like, that's what between we, would, tapes. we would always come up with movie plots. So we had Roadhouse 2. Yes. We had Stan. Secret Princess, the Disney movie. Yes. It and might not be the title, but... No, that's a great title. <laughs> Do you remember... Who said Warhorse? Who said someday is now? Was that Karen? 
Somebody says it, and it became the main chorus to one of the Disney songs in the movie. Right, because someone said, for some reason, you know, during a normal course of production, some day is now, and then it's like, that sounds like a Disney song. Mm -hmm. And then we created, <laughs> we created a plot around it. Created this because, narrative. Because so the there's Disney so much movie. time where you stop filming. <laughs> so the Disney movie was about <laughs> this princess who didn't know secret she was princess. a secret princess she didn't know she's a princess and she has this little sidekick pig named oinkers yes and this the royal family somehow finds out she's a princess and wait she's... didn't they already make this movie probably was it anastasia right yeah mm. yeah very similar but there wasn't a pig so there wasn't a pig yeah yeah. And... yeah and she would talk to her and then remember uh what was it moana came out and we yeah. saw a poster for it. Like, oh no, I saw an ad for it on the, on the internet. And she had a pig. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, they ruined our they idea. Stole our it idea. turns out the pig's hardly in the movie. So Damn it, good. Alexa. Yeah. So, so the, oh. the, the princess and her pig sidekick, she understood pig. So the pig would just go like, <laughs> and she'd go, like, oh yeah, we should save the little boy in the well. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and that was their relationship. So the royal family finds out that she's a princess. And the new royal family. New oh, royal so they family. probably don't want her. They don't want, want her to be the princess, oh, right? God. It's pretty crazy. Yep. And, and so where are we gonna have like this like uh, like evil matriarch who's like this yeah. like old woman who's like <laughs> like, like, like like who should like have been mean mom or or uh, like who should have been the villain in Frozen the like mustache man, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone mm -hmm. something like that character. So she's like touring around the palace, and they're all like, "Oh, that's a song." Uh, they're all, "If you want to be a princess, that's a song yes. in that scene." If you want we to be put a, a lot of thought into this, <laughs> and she's touring around and realizing that this whole royal family is focused on tradition and the way things are, and she's more progressive, and she wants to like reach out to the peasants and you know be kind to people and have pigs in the palace. Yes, which which brings us to "No Pigs in the Palace," the song. It's a separate song, <laughs> or maybe it's a section of the song. Okay, as they're touring, <laughs> we're still developing it. Princess. No, would there be a scene where they're trying to dress her up like a princess, and then the pig's there, and someone's got a tape measure, and they're trying to measure it as well, and then they put put it like in a jacket. And it's like, <laughs> like, can you picture that? I can't. Oh, and Beautiful. then in Act Three, when everything goes to hell. We were gonna rip off Little Mermaid, where the pig ends up in a slaughterhouse. You remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She has to save no. her Oinkers. Oinkers is name? the pig's name. Had to save Oinkers. But then the big the song. Moment. I think it could be like the the romance song. Mm -hmm. Someday is now. It could be yeah. a duet. Yeah. Right? yeah. Wow. So it's yeah. Beautiful. One day, someday could will be now. I don't know when. I don't know how. Someday is now. Then they have the romantic moment. Then of course, that's when everything goes to hell. Of course, because every movie's the same. That's how it is. Mono myth. And ice cream is lard. What? On television. <laughs> uh, that was pretty much. That was in the Roadhouse Two. We had to figure out pretty well. Roadhouse Two. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Like you don't even have to tell yes. me more. If I had the money, I would totally. We could tell that. you more if you want. Okay. We get it all figured out. Okay, fine. Out. Yeah. Tell me okay, more. Okay, so. Of course, we had it all cast to Judy Greer. And it's a Kickstarter. Yes. Judy Greer buys a bar. And she's like, I, I'm going to, you know, I, this is going to be my new life because I just got divorced or something. And, and I got this bar. And can you help me? My cousin, Charlize Theron, Jesse Dalton. She's going to be the daughter of mm -hmm. Dalton and what? Kelly I love Lynch. it already. I love it yeah. already. And so she's like, I am a doctor. I, I bounced my way through medical school, but I don't want to help you. I need to refuse the call. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Joseph and Campbell so, would be proud. Judy Greer goes to the bar, but there was a bar fight and she gets beat up. Mm -hmm. she's, she's in the hospital. Beep! <coughs> beep! Beep! And then Charlie Steren comes in and she's like, oh, that's, that's pretty... That, that, that was weird. weird. Yeah. Whoa. I said beep, beep, beep at the same time the ribs finished. So... That leads into the Charlie Sterling comes in and she's like, what happened? Uh, my body's out of control. You got to help me. And then she's like, I may have refused the call, but now I'm, it's my call to adventure. And then she, and, no, but before she, before she jumps into action, you have to have the scene where she goes to Dalton's grave and you see a CGI ghost of Patrick Swayze. And the Whoa. tombstone says, pain don't hurt. And of course. Wow. And then, you know who walks up in the background? Kelly Lynch who was the love interest in Roadhouse. And she's like, 
Your dad never started a fight. He couldn't win, but he couldn't fight cancer. So it's, it takes a second. And then she crosses then, the threshold. Yes, and yeah. she goes to the bar, and then there's all these rednecks, and they say horrible things like, I've always wanted to hit a woman that wasn't my wife. What? <laughs> yeah, you give her all these awful and rednecks. I mean, it's house, too, they, so they, it makes sense. It would be some pretty they say, and instead of instead of I thought you'd be bigger, it's I thought you'd be a man. Because wow. give her like an androgynous yeah. name, Jesse Dalton. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all the further we got, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. That sounds good, right? Yeah, I think there's good. a lot there. Yeah. Yeah. Charlize Theron is the perfect replacement for Betty. Yes. Oh, hell yeah. Even though she's so way good. too old to be their daughter. True. Mm -hmm. But she's still perfect. She is, yeah. She's such a badass. Yeah. Well, there you go, Hollywood. Oh, what was our, what was our take it and do it? Oh, we wanted to make it a Kickstarter, right? Yeah, so there's different tiers <laughs> of the rewards. $10,000 level, you get to kiss Charlize, no tongue. <laughs> oh, wow. That was the highest level. Yeah. And then another one was like... Oh, and every yeah. level was a quote from the movie. Yeah. So like the $10 level was, I ain't got $20. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the one of the levels was... Get a real broken beer bottle from the set. <laughs> get these stupid prizes. Oh wow! But then at the end, she has to become a master of two worlds. Mm -hmm. Of course. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Allison. I think there's one more undisclosed aspect of the Ben Heck show that we've never talked about publicly. One could call it spooky. I started filming in a spare bedroom. The very first, like, what, 10 episodes? In Verona. Yep. Wisconsin. Which is unrecognizable now because of Epic. Then I rented out a shop on the southeast side of Madison, which actually is not too far from where I live here now. And then... A couple months after I rented that, that's when you started. Yeah. And there was... The shop was a little weird. It was weird. Okay, I'm just going to say it. In what way? It seems like it may have been haunted. Yeah. Why were you... Uh, oh, you, could, you, you could be the straight man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why were you led to believe this? There were unexplained things that happened. Okay, what kind of unexplained thing? The most common was lights would turn on. Mm -hmm. Like, we'd come we'd come in in the morning, and the overhead lights would be on. We'd come back from lunch, we'd do corporate lunch. The lights would be on. And we were both, like, really good about turning the lights off. You turn the lights off. And you knew when they were off because there weren't any win Like, there were windows in the office space, but in the shop, there weren't any windows. The sunlight did not illuminate so very much. So you knew, like... There was no forgetting to turn the lights off. Because the only windows that we had were facing north. Could it possibly have been someone coming in, maybe a landlord or a cleaner or something, that would turn on the lights we during didn't have, the night? There were no third parties who came into the shop for any reason. Isn't it landlord, like a landlord can't enter a rental yeah, property? Yeah, and... Without you know, finding you know, consent. We didn't see the landlord a lot. Oh yeah, she didn't. Well, because like, we had that drug dealer next by. Like, yeah, she didn't yeah. care. So, oh yeah, we had a drug dealer neighbor too. Mm -hmm. That was yeah, that was probably scarier than yeah, the ghost. Yeah, there was like yeah, one day there was a raid. Anyways, there was tons it's of drugs. cops. Yeah, we yeah. we went to leave and they actually had their guns out, yes. which cops do yeah, not do like, unless we're, it's pretty we're like, serious. Okay, we're saying. In. And mm -hmm. then remember, I was like, Allison, unlike in the movies, bullets go through a lot of things. So let's stand away over here. Yeah, I think yeah. we actually went into the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, we went like all the way back. Wow. Cause yeah, because like a 44 like or 45 would go right through drywall. Yeah. Like that. Eesh. So anyways, but then there would be like other weird things. Okay, so for instance, there were pinball machines. And one morning I got there before Ben and the pinball machine was on. That like was it when was I had doing, attack What's it Mars. called? Like it's like... Yeah, track mode. Oh, track mode. Thank you. And it was just like... Oh. And when we you, turned the when pinball you, machines off. Yes, because like, when, we, when we would take a break and play pinball, we turned it on, played it, and then turned it I off. I mean, you know what you he's like about, on. like, you cut the camera as soon as you're done. Like, you don't yeah. waste any batteries of anything of any And you time. don't run the heat very high. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so it's like that we never, ever, ever walked away from the pinball machine without when we were done. It yeah, without, and I came in And especially morning, not overnight. And mm -hmm. it was like, the lights, of course, were off in the shop, but then, like, the pinballs in the back... 
The thing is, if, if you were leave, if, even if you'd left the pinball machine on, when you turned off the overhead lights to leave, you would definitely notice that it was on, even more so than yeah, normal. Yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of it didn't make sense, so and we never talked about it in front of Felix. And it was like a, a, a switch, you know, like a physical yeah, a big toggle switch. switch that you would have had to... So, and so Ben, like, I told him that, and he's just like, well, like, did you play it before you left last night? I'm like, no, I didn't. Like, did you leave it on? He's like, no Because we were trying to it. figure out logical reasons. Yeah, yeah, we always went... And then it's like came in one day and like a whole bunch of books, like he had these binders on this bookshelf. Had fallen off the shelves. Yeah, they had fallen off and it was just like, what's up and with that? And then we would like crime scene it where we're like, okay, we picked him back up, we put it back on the shelf and we're like, how far would these have to be not pushed in before yeah, they would fall out? Yeah, it was like out? kind of by the door that went between the office and the shop. And so we're like, well, if you close the door, like would that make it fall? And here's the thing, we talked about the drug dealer who got busted. So he installed car stereos. And that's why we weren't surprised that he was a drug dealer because we heard every time he installed a car stereo, it was like wham, 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 and we couldn't film. Yeah. And it was super loud, but that wouldn't, that wouldn't affect anything. Like, that, remember the clock that yeah. it kept knocking off the wall? Yeah, the clock. I still have that keep clock. Keep falling off the wall. But that wouldn't happen while the next door neighbor was doing car stereo demonstrations. But it would happen. We'd come into the morning and that would be on the floor, that power strip in your office. Yeah. Kept coming off the nail. Yeah, and it was like one that you like put on and then pulled down. Yes. And then one morning I came in and that like big kind of like island type work table, all of the, like there were post-it notes and tools that were now on the ground, like as if somebody had just gone like that, like it was weird. all on the ground. And, and, we would, just, that's very weird. and we'd come in and we'd try to figure it out. And but when Felix showed up, we, we'd stop talking about it Yeah. because he already thought we were weird enough. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like the one with the books, it's like, and I think you found that. I think yes. that was one that you came in and you were there before me and you found that one. Yeah, and then you found the pinball machine. But yeah, it was like if like if like if somebody fell out of a shelf, it would just go boom straight down. But this was like they were out a couple feet. Yeah. It was almost like like something that hit it from behind. And then I went I think one time I was in the bathroom, so it usually would turn on lights, but sometimes it would turn them off. Because one time I was in the bathroom in the back of the shop, in the old like this is the old shop, and then I came out and the overhead lights were off. Like, yeah, I wasn't I there, strange. but I was Yeah, in the you office. were back in your office. Yeah. And then actually, uh, and remember then you thought it with was the switch be off? off? Speaking of yes, that switch, so there's more about it's the physically switch. moved. So, this uh, people are, are going to think I'm really crazy now. My sister knows a guy who is a ghost hunter. And so I was like, hey, have him come here. I just want to like, get his opinion on some stuff. And, you know, he didn't like do all that stuff you see on TV. We just kind of talked about it. Yeah. But he did notice something that I had never thought about. And I'm like, well, this is the light switch. It's the overhead lights for the shop, the old shop, the smaller shop. And he's like, well, what's this? And then on the light switch cover, there was like residue, right? Like tape residue. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, well, what's this? And I'm like, and then I went over and I got a roll of duct tape and I held it up against the light switch and it matched. So someone in the past had duct taped that light physically. Wow. Mm -hmm. So... So other people had had that problem. And then, yes, and then my neighbor... Weird neighbor? Or, no, no, nice neighbor, okay, David. nice neighbor, yeah. Nice neighbor David was moving out, and, you know, I was, like, friends with him. And I'm like, well, he's moving. It doesn't matter if he thinks I'm crazy. I'm like, you ever have your lights turn on? And he's like, yeah! He's like, a lot of times I'll come in in the morning and the lights will be on. And I'm like, weird. Yeah. Me too. And, and, the, and the switch would physically move. Yes, it's physically yeah. moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's weird. Then there, I think the most. Well, you did it like, to your office lights once too. Yeah, and then but I think the biggest thing is like we were playing pinball. And remember, we thought the mail guy because we were waiting for we needed a package yeah. for that episode, and we both turned because we thought because we distinctly heard the front door open, mm -hmm. and we both turned and there was nothing. And then didn't you see something out the yeah, window? Yeah, yeah. They saw somebody walk by the window and we're just like, yeah. We're like, like hey, UPS. it's the mailman. We got to get the mail. Yeah, like UPS or whatever, however, UP, U, whatever. We thought that they were out there and like we went and not only had nobody entered the shop, but there was nobody outside the building Damn. at all. Like we walked outside. We, I heard someone even say something, but it was like kind of inaudible. Well, that's, we, we, we gave the ghost a sex and a name. Yeah. Gary. Gary. Yeah. Stuff. And both of us actually at separate times had Heard. spent the night there because like I stayed there a couple times because I rode my bike in. It was going to be like a big winter storm. So yeah. I'm like, I'm just going to stay the night so I don't have to like bike home and bike back in the How snow. many nights did you s s 
been there. I think in my time there, I think maybe three or four nights. Really? That yeah. many? Yeah. I think... I... It was so scary, but I was just why, thinking okay, over it. Why, I was like, it's fine. Was it scary because you th were thinking about ghosts or yeah. did something? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was scary because I was thinking about ghosts because like I already knew that the weird stuff had happened there. And I mean, so I think that's it was like, like kind of freaky and I had to keep the lights on. I think yeah. that's about, that's like half the battle, that kind of stuff. Like you're scaring yourself half the time. Yeah. The thing was, there were, there were things there that didn't really make sense. Yeah. A lot of things that made no sense. Like physically, Physical changes in the yeah. environment. Like, didn't it, it turn on the blue screen lights one time when we were in the main office? Oh. It did. You know, it got to a point where there was, like, so many weird things happening that one time the air I was by myself, Ben had to run to Menards, and the air compressor came on, which was a totally normal thing because, <laughs> like, when it runs out, it'll still yeah. be on and waiting to compress and then mm -hmm. automatically turn back on. Yeah. But it was just, like, even though that was a normal thing, it happened and, it, like, freaked me out so much because, like, tensions are already it so makes you, high. It like, makes you I couldn't aware. even go back in the shop. Oh, no. I remember, like, I called Ben, and I was like, the air compressor? He's like, he's like, that's normal. Like, it's that's, fine. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, I can't go back into the shop. I'm sitting on this rock until you come back. There was a, there was a time. It was just too much. It was, it was on it was the weekend. Stuff. One time on the weekend I was there and I was doing something with my friend Jesse. And then his friend was in town visiting. And then we went to Red Robin as we usually did. Corporate lunch. Corporate lunch. Corporate lunch. Then we came back and the lights were on and the guy was like, Oh, is there like a, is like a, a hobo in here or a vagrant? And I was like, I didn't even want to like explain it to like this person I didn't even yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, Jesse and I were like, mm -hmm. <laughs> wasn't, I think that was pretty much it, right? Yeah, I think those, that, that was mostly it. But I think for me, the, the weirdest things is when I showed up and the pinball machine was on because that was like pretty shocking. And yeah. then I mean, also if you think when about I showed up and all this stuff had been not like, Think the pinball Except machine being on is really no different than a light switch turning on. Yeah, that's true. It's, but it's, it's like, still I think weird for because... Me, it's like, I think we kind of like could talk ourselves out of the lights thing. Like, oh, well, maybe we did it's forget a switch. To, to turn it off. I think like we kind of like wanted to like with, believe that it was normal. Machine. But with the pinball machine, like we In knew that mode, there was that's no... like a loud yeah, thing. We knew well, it doesn't, it doesn't no make sound way in that we mode. had turned it, it on. No. Oh. Like we just knew that we had turned it off. You know what I mean? So yeah. that was like... Here's the thing. If you... If if you're prone to forget something, you do it all the time. Like, you either never forget to put your gas cap back on your car, or you always do it, right? And, you know, we always turn lights off. Yeah. Right? And, like, like I will always forget to add an attachment to an email, right? It's not a rare thing. I always do it. Yeah. And... Yeah, so and I, I'm always, like, really... I'm always turning off lights, like a minimum number of lights, because it takes electricity, right? Yeah, I don't know. It was just it, yeah, it was weird. We, we so joked we were, about it at first, but then like it kind of piled up over the years. Yeah. Where we were like, "What the hell?" Yeah, it was pretty strange. I have to say, just like spooking yourself out when we got went to the new shop, uh, the bigger one, it like I could I could work you know late into the night and not freak myself out. Yeah, like we joked around when we were packing up how like <laughs> Gary was gonna like get into one of the boxes. Yeah, we're gonna get the like, new shop and open it out. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, so believe what you will. You know, maybe you are a paranormal investigator. Head over to Femright Drive. 4510 Femright Drive in Hessen, Wisconsin, 53716. See if you can pick anything up on your... Um... Ghostometer? Yeah, ghostometer. I think I, I, th I, I think I stayed there four nights. It was... Um... Like three of them were storm related. And one of them was drunk related. Was, was drunk related, yeah. <laughs> so my friends came to town and they're like, hey, we'll pick you up at your shop. And so I'm like, well, I'm just going to sleep on the couch because I can't drive home now. Yeah. I I don't know. I, I slept fine. I actually, like that office, like your office with the couch, if you close the door, it was like a tomb. Mm -hmm. So you can sleep really well. Actually, um, one of the last times I remember something, it was 2014. Remember when I bought that space shuttle pinball machine? Yeah. And uh, we were at MGC and we were driving back to Madison on Sunday afternoon and when I got back to the shop your office light was on hmm. I, and I'm like hmm. yeah I'm like oh that's different that you shouldn't turn on that one yeah because it was all it was usually always the main room overhead but we never caught anything on camera so hmm. well you know I think the thing maybe he was trying to communicate it I mean it, it doesn't seem you like see malicious the, things you really. see these shows where 
they turn on all the lights and they wait till like two in the morning to catch a ghost. And what we noticed was like weird things can happen anytime during the day. Yeah. So why does a ghost care if it's dark? Yeah. <laughs> or whatever it is. I think like one of our theories was like that there was just like a weak spot between dimensions and like it was just yeah. like seeping through of another dimension. I mean, whatever it is, there there has to be a scientific explanation for it. Yeah. I mean, but we came in, but speaking of science, we came in like, why are those books on the floor? There was no explanation for it. Yeah. But maybe like Matthew McConaughey was tapping his watch. Been. Like, Murph! Murph! <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Could be. So, yeah, that's probably the most secret untold story of the Ben Heck show. True. Any closing thoughts? Ooh, spooky. <laughs> I think the scariest thing about that old shop was the lackadaisical effort the landlord put into plowing. Mm, mm. That's true. Yeah, remember that time Felix's car was sliding sideways off the window? <laughs> it was like something from a cartoon. No, no joke. So it, it, on the, we were talking about how it was dark in there at the north yeah. side of the building, yeah. which also made it cooler too, yeah. but also meant ice couldn't melt. Mm. And so the landlord was a really poor at plowing. There's that one spring, that really horrible cold winter, like 2014. Yeah. There's no joke, like two inches of ice. And I, I remember I kept going to Menards buying salt. I, I, I personally you put like... an assault rifle. rifle. Yes. Yeah. I put like 500 pounds of salt in like a couple of weeks. But before I did that, Felix shows up for work one day and we look out the window and... It's like Felix's car is facing the window. So his car is basically slid sideways. <laughs> and of course Felix is like... <laughs> you might remember. You can imagine. I can imagine. Can remember imagine. in Indiana so Jones easily. in the Last Crusade when that plane goes into the tunnel and they look over at the pilot. It was kind of like that. He was like, like just sliding past the window. And that was the day I parked over in the other spot. I'm glad I did because otherwise, yeah. Yeah. And it was so slick. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. The untold secrets of the Ben Heck Show. Leave us a comment below if you have any more questions for a future video that we may or may not make. We, we only made this because we're in the same place at the same time. It's a good time. It's true. Goodbye and stuff. <laughs>